your water housing inlet. Uh, it's got a wee slide up cover there. And then grab your pump hose. It goes around that way. It's got a little hole there which lines up with that one. Push that in. The wee tab along the top here, you can push the cover back down and just helps lock it into position. Um, then grab your water barrel. Yeah, so grab your water barrel, take the lid off, fill it full of water. Um, then this is the actual pump part, so that slides right down into the bottom part of your barrel to try and you know get it as low as you can. Uh, you then also have this little uh, sort of leaf and dust cover that sits in the in the top there to stop any junk getting into fresh water. So once that's all hooked up, you can then go inside and turn your water pump on. So this is your uh, gas bottle unit, so two buttons there, that opens up. You've got enough storage in there for two bottles, uh, two 9 kilo bottles. You've got your connection hose there, very similar to a barbecue one, spin on type. Um, and there's also a little uh, shut off valve there that's currently in the open position. Um, but you don't, don't really have to use that as such if you've got your bottles turned off or your hose disconnected that'll do the same function. Just in front of your gas bottle housing unit there, um, this is your uh, trimmer heater outlet. Um, so you will get sort of some hot warm air uh, coming out of there, especially when it's running on gas. So it's quite normal, it's just a, an outlet vent. Just behind your wheel here, these are your um, grey water outlets. So they've just got little covers there that open up. Take your cap off. You've got your little connection hose here, so they push into those wee slots like that, and then drop that into your waste barrel, and it's all good to, to drain into there. And at the far end, you have a full and an empty gauge. Um, you've also under this lid, turn it around. Uh, you've got a, a bungee cord there, so you can tie your caddy to the rim or an under on the chassis there just stops it rolling away if you've got high winds or anything like that. Um, you've also got this sweet cap that, that spout drops in there so you can can put it on this end and just gives you a direct pour when you're emptying the caddy. At the back corner of your van on the same side as your grey water outlet um, this is your filler part for your toilet so you fill fill your fresh water in there. They generally take around 8 to 10 litres, just depends on the, the model. Um, there's also a pink liquid that you can put in here, which helps keep your pump lubricated and just helps with smells and things like that. Um, so that's that. You can, when you fill it up, you'll see the water level come up here so you know when it's, it's nice and full. But just under your fresh water inlet there for the toilet, this is your waste caddy part. And it's a nice big area there so you can uh, probably store chemicals if you need to in there but this is the actual caddy part in here so you've got your little tab lever that pulls up and allows you to wheel it out uh, this little lever here also lifts up so it gives you a, a handle to wheel it away that's back down just make sure it clicks back in behind those wee tabs like that. Uh, on the top here these parts here are operated from inside the van, so you don't have to worry about those too much. Um, you do have a little air release there, so if it's hard to get the cap off, you can just press that down. Just allows a bit of air into the system to help it come off. So, spout turns out like that. Undo your cap, empty your waste, and you're good to go. Um, there's also a blue liquid that goes in this container. Um, just, again, helps with smells and also helps break things down. Once that's all ready to go back in, pop it in there, slide it back and just make sure it locks into position there. Uh, also in this compartment, up in the top corner here is a little drain hose, so that comes out. That's designed to drain your fresh tank, um, so if you're storing the van um, for a long time, especially over winter, it's a good idea to drain that tank out, just stops anything freezing and bursting and it also stops your water pump submersed in water for a long time um, and causing any damage if it does freeze. Okay, on your um, entry door side of the van, this is your power 
outlet unit so that slides up um, got your connector there there is a wee cap on this one um, I think you, the one that comes with the van might be slightly different um, there's a wee slot there which aligns with the one at the bottom so you know you've got it the right way around that just pushes in there um, you can when you've got the other one because the cap's not quite the same you can slide this down a little bit to to hold it in and just keep a bit of the weather out of there um, but that's your 240 power well, just inside your door here sort of in between the door and the microwave this is your main 12 volt um, system so you've got your master switch here so that turns on and livens your 12 volt system up uh, just on the wee left button here just tells you your current voltage of your battery um, down beside your master switch is your water pump switch so as I said earlier um, go and fill your water caddy up hook your pump hose and everything on once that's done you can then come in and turn your pump on um, and that'll start sucking the water up and priming the system you will especially if you've drained your hot water system um, you will get a fair bit of air in the line um, takes a takes a few minutes to to push that air out of the line um, but once it's out and you've shut the the taps off it'll prime the system and the pump will only kick in and out when it needs to when you're running the, the water uh, just underneath there this is your uh, interior 12 volt lights so flick that on and that'll liven up any of your 12 volt lights that are on um, so if you want to leave your pump on and your master switch but you want the lights off you can flick that on and off um, beside that this is your awning light which is just out above your door on the outside so if you've got a, an awning up or anything like that you can flick that on and give yourself a bit of lighting on the outside this is your uh, Truma um, combi boiler control so press that on there and this gives you your main control so the wee flashing picture of the wee motorhome there that is your room heater so press this wee button in uh, you're on off at the moment so you just turn it up to your desired temperature so once that's on, make sure you, it'll show you if, that you've got your mains power on. So press that and that'll start heating up in your room. Um, good thing to know is these are heating only so they don't they don't chill. So if it's if it's 25 degrees outside and you want to go to 18, it's not going to chill it back down. It's purely it'll go the other way. Uh, right next to that, if I scroll to it with the wee wheel, this is your water heater. Uh, so press enter there, you've got off, you have echo, hot and boost. Um, boost is designed to run for about 15 minutes when you, basically when you first hook up your van, when you've got to where you're going and you want, you want to bring the water up to temperature quite quick, the boost function will do that for about 15 minutes. Uh, you've also got echo and hot, so they'll bring the water to the same, same temperature, it's just Eco does it at a nice slow pace and hot will bring it up a lot quicker. Um, so generally if you've selected boost, um, it'll run that boost function for 15 minutes and then it'll automatically switch, switch itself back to the hot function. Um, so that's the hot, uh, the hot water side. Uh, let me just go back out of there. Um, this one here with the wee gas bottle and the two lightning bolts there is your... Uh, basically your power or input selector so enter there you've got electrical 2 and electrical 1 that just means 1 kilowatt or 2 kilowatts of power um, again either one will will heat your system up to the same level it's just how fast it'll do it um, so yeah E1 is 1 kilowatt E2 or EL2 sorry is 2 kilowatts um, you then have a mix function you've got mix 2 or mix 1 so mix 1 means it's more dominant on the gas side and mix 2 means it's more dominant on the electrical side um, but uh, the system will automatically choose which one's more um, more of a priority to use if you're using say your fridge on gas and you're cooking with gas then it'll automatically switch to power just because it knows there's two other devices trying to trying to run on it as well um, and then you also have gas option only so that'll just run the the combi boiler on gas 
just go back to E2 there at the moment. Uh, and right on the end here, your wee fan function. So you have eco, high, um, and that is purely just for your fan that circulates the, the air around the room to the wee ducts. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, just your fan speed there. Um, with that, if you go back to your room heater here and turn that back to off and go back to the fan, it'll give you a vent option. So it's purely just circulating room temperature air. Um, so it'll give it a little bit of a cooling function, but it's not a, a chilled um, cold air function. It's just purely circulating air in the room. The seat um, beside the, the kitchen bench there, this is the actual combi boiler. So this is what does your water heating and your room heating. Um, this unit sort of don't really have to worry too much about that. It looks after itself. The only thing to know is this little uh, switch here. This is designed to, you know, when you've finished using the van and you're going to store it for a long time, especially over winter, you know, you want to drain all that water out so you don't freeze and burst the tank. Um, you flip that switch up, so that'll drain all of the water that's in this boiler um, out through the wee overflow there. Um, the only thing to remember is when you go to use the van again, make sure this is back down, uh, otherwise when you hook your water pump system up on the outside and turn the pump on it'll just pump everything out that overflow so um, just yeah make sure that's back down before you fill the system up. Uh, this is your your range and your oven so you got a like a work space you know bench top piece there so that folds up and there's a little button clip here so you can click that on which helps keep it up out of the way. Uh, you then got your glass lid so that comes up and sits against that. You got your four gas burners there very similar to a barbecue, so push push it in, turn it around to your highest flame setting, hold that in, then got your igniter, so hold that, click it away until the gas lights up, um, wait a couple of seconds, and then let go of the button, and the ring should stay on, and then you just have your flame adjustment from there. When you want to turn your, your ring off, you just turn that back to the zero, and that turns that off. Um, one thing to note, is make sure these are nice and cool to the touch before you put your glass panel back down because um, they have been known to shatter if it's it's too hot. Um, <clears throat> you've also got a, a grill just here that opens up. There's a little rail that runs along here. So when you use your um, grill unit, so same again, push and hold and turn. Use the igniter. Um, that'll liven everything up with the gas rail and then you've got your temperature control from there and underneath a little bit hard to see with that but down the back there's a little rail down there so that's for your oven side so same again like all the other switches push and hold and turn you'll see that uh, gas kick in down there and then you just have your temperature control from there this is your domestic fridge control so let's hold this wee button that livens the system up It'll generally go back to the last setting you had it on. So it's currently selected on 240 mains power there at the moment. And the temperature's right up at maximum, the maximum cold. Um, so this little thermometer button down here, that just selects your, your temperature rating. Um, and then you have your mode button above that. So it can select to auto. So auto will automatically select which one is more preferable. Um, so if you've got, say, your uh, combi boiler running on electricity it might find that it's better to run on gas so as long as your gas systems turn on it'll automatically select that um, you do have a battery option which is going to tell me it's not connected at the moment I'll just go off that while it, so it stops beeping um, <clears throat> so for your battery option it's not currently wired up on the van um, it is an option that you can have wired up so you'll need a 12 pin plug system on the caravan and on your vehicle you can get an auto electrician to wire that up for you um, but it's designed that so basically if you're at home you've cooled your caravan down on 240 power or on gas um, you can fill it fill your fridge full of your food and things like that and then you can switch it to the battery option um, which it's designed to run off your vehicle's battery while you're traveling and it's just designed to maintain the temperature of the fridge while you're traveling. It won't actually cool it down. 
um, but it's yeah, not as I say it's not currently wired but it is an option if you want to go down that track um, and then you've also got your your gas option there um, so select that it should it should do its own ignition system um, you may get a light flash here under the wee triangle if that happens generally it means that your gas has run out or you haven't turned the bottle on this is your toilet on the inside um, you've got your flush button up here on the wall so just a wee electrical flush button so you press that that'll flush into the uh, into the bowl there um, your bowl does rotate so if you want to fit your legs in a bit easier you can rotate the bowl make it more comfortable um, underneath there you put this grey lever uh, that, that operates a little slide at the bottom here so you push that round that opens into your caddy you know, it can flush flush everything away and then shut that back off um, make sure that this is in the closed position if you want to go and remove the waste caddy on the outside um, if it's in the open position it won't pull out so this is your your a-frame and your your hitch so you've got a standard seven pin plug there um, as i mentioned earlier about the the battery connection um, you can get a 12 pin plug system wired up um, and then you have to do that on the vehicle as well um, at the back here you've got your handbrake so very similar to a car press the button and push that down so that's on the off position and then just pull it up for locking it on and the jockey wheel you've got your height there so up and down on there uh, there's also these wee, wee grooves here on either side of this and that's designed for these arms to slide up into just to get your jockey wheel up up and out the way when when it's hooked on the vehicle um, you then have this lever so you undo that and you can pull this whole uh, jockey wheel column up and the wheel will actually come and sit up sort of around here and then you can tighten that back up and just keeps it up and out of the way when you're traveling um, at the front part here this is your main coupler uh, you've got your breakaway cable so that's designed that it can go around the tow ball underneath here and you get a wee carabiner clip so it hooks back onto itself so that's designed that you know in the unfortunate event if this ever come off um, this breakaway cable gets pulled by the vehicle and it engages your handbrake so it just stops the van running away um, you know or passing you down the motorway um, you can it's personal preference you can you can put it around like that or you can hook it onto a D shackle like you would a, a standard chain um, on your actual lock system there so this little black lever you can push that up and it stays stays in that position as you lower it onto the vehicle and the tow ball goes into the coupler that will then snap down like that so you know that it's connected um, then you do have your secondary lock here so you push that down this little red button will pop up a little bit and show you a green ring around the edge that lets you know that that's uh, properly secured um, this secondary lock has two little pads that squeeze either side of the tow ball and it's a stabilization system so it's quite quite handy to have uh, when you want to remove it from the vehicle lift that one up you then have to hold this black lever up so you've got to hold it up like that and then you use your jockey wheel to lift it off the vehicle um, once it's off the vehicle that lever should stay up um, but you do have to hold it while you wind it up off the vehicle 